My name is Erin Sheldon, and my daughter Maggie was diagnosed with Angelin Syndrome in 2004. And I think I spent those first few years um, after her diagnosis just trying to learn as much about her syndrome as I possibly could. I wanted to know what Angelin was going to mean for her, what it was going to mean for us, but really what was it going to mean for her? Um, what was her deletion? going to mean for her? What kind of obstacles and barriers was Angelman going to create for her? And what did I need to do? What could I do to help her overcome them? Which of those barriers could I try to dismantle myself? I put a lot of energy into meeting as many other families as I could, and I think like many of us, I was looking for a roadmap, right? I wanted to find someone with a kid a lot like mine, but older, um, with skills that my child didn't have so that I could just imitate what that other parent had done. Um, just try and make sure I provided those same opportunities so that Maggie could grow um, and learn the same way as, as their child. and. That's where I found the research and articles and just the anecdotes, the stories I heard from other families really confusing because our kids can be so different and our families are trying so many different things and it's really challenging to know which one is going to help my child um, confront whatever her next barrier, next obstacle is, so that she can get past it. And in no area is this more complex than in communication. Angelman causes such a profound communication um, barrier for our children that knowing what to do to help them communicate their thoughts and their feelings um, is just extremely hard. So last year, the Angelman Syndrome Foundation asked me to be part of their uh, Strategic Advisory Committee on Communication and help review research proposals that were put forward for funding as well as um, try to recruit ones that were going to answer some of these questions that our families have, right? And we were looking for um, studies that can help our families wherever they are, whatever age their child is, whether they're very young uh, and newly diagnosed or whether their son or daughter is already middle age. Um, we have folks in our community who are digital natives. They've been born after iPads and iPhones were even invented and they're already swiping their way through all kinds of apps. And we have sons and daughters who have never had access to any form of technology, um, who are already much older and whose families are trying to ask these questions now um, at a, just a very different, different stage in life. In this video, we're going to look at two um, projects that the Angelman Syndrome Foundation is quite proud to fund. And both of them look in different ways at the barriers that our children face. Dr. Sedwani's research team at Boston Children's Hospital is concerned with our most emergent communicators. So these are our children who are not yet using any form of communication system. These are children who may not be initiating any form of communication yet. So these are kids who really have not yet learned that they can influence the behavior of people around them. Um, Dr. Sedwani's team will be introducing them to speech generating devices, making sure that the children can actually use and access whatever device is selected, um, working with the families to find the most appropriate system, and then training the children to use it in a way that the kids can see that immediate cause and effect response of using a system to request an object or an activity or attention or play or storybook reading, um, as well as refusing um, or rejecting something, and just helping these kids really see um, the power that they can have have in their environment when, when they have a, a communication system to support them with that. Hello, I'm Dr. Anjali Sadwani, a clinician and researcher at Boston Children's Hospital. First, many thanks to the Angelman Syndrome Foundation for supporting my research project that seeks to improve the day-to-day -day functioning of children with AS by teaching them how to influence their environment and the people they interact with. My research study targets beginning communicators, a smaller population of people in the AS community 
who are not yet using technology or a system to communicate. To identify children for the study, the parents and caregivers, which includes teachers or speech and language pathologists or beginning communicators, will complete the communication matrix. The communication matrix is a proven method for the evaluation of communication skills that will help determine where the child's current communication skills stand. Once a child is identified as being eligible, the study will begin with a psychologist evaluating the child's general development, motor and language skills. Following this, an AAC evaluation by a speech and language pathologist will help determine potentially beneficial AC applications or devices to support communication. Then, the research team will seek input from the child's parents to determine the AC device or app that best fits their child's communication needs. For the following 12 weeks, graduate students will visit each child in his or her home or school twice per week to teach the child how to use the device. Should our intervention week be effective, we anticipate that by the end of 12 weeks, beginning communicators will begin to learn how to use this device through this home-based intervention. One month later, the graduate students will visit the child to ensure the device remains effective in communicating his or her respective needs. Overall, the goals of the study are twofold. Firstly, to help individuals with AS who are earlier emerging communicators make significant gains in the direction of more effective communication skills. And secondly, to establish a program that has shown success in improving communication in certain individuals with AS. Thank you for your interest in my study. Hello. My name is David Rosenblatt, and I'm the father of a young boy with Angelman syndrome who is using a robust communication system every day at home and at school. And today I want to say that I'm proud of the hard work by so many people to get us to where we all are today with these communication research studies. Specifically, the Angelman syndrome foundation leadership and the researchers involved in these studies took some hard feedback from our community very seriously and worked collaboratively with experts in the field to make these studies as strong as possible. I'm also really happy that the ASF has created a communication advisory committee made up of experts in Angelman syndrome and experts in communication supports to play a significant role in reviewing future research proposals and guiding priorities for investment in this critical research area. As parents and as advocates, we believe that our loved ones have important stories to tell and that the world will be a better place when they can tell them. So I wanna thank the ASF, the researchers, and our whole Angelman Syndrome community for investing the resources that we need to build our knowledge base about best practices to support our loved ones to communicate. Thank you. Next, you'll hear from Dr. Sennett's research team in Portland. Dr. Sennett is as much concerned with what we're doing as parents, as teachers, as educational assistants, as he is with how our children are communicating. He wants to help us create the richest communication environment possible for our kids. He's testing whether students with Angelman syndrome respond as significantly as other students with complex communication needs to the same intervention. His project teaches us as the adults, as the communication partners, how to integrate the student's communication system into all of the ordinary activities that we already do, such as shared reading, such as play, and anything else we do with our kids. Hello, I'm Samuel Sennett from Portland State University and the Universal Design Lab, and I'm very thankful for the sponsorship from the Angelman Syndrome Foundation for the AAC Immersion Project. This project 
could happen anywhere. It could be outside, it could be in a school, in, ho in your home, and the focus of the project is to help individuals learn to communicate. Specifically, for individuals with Angelman syndrome to learn to communicate using AAC. Communication is connection, and we want to help individuals connect in school, in home, with peers, with family members, with school, therapists and teachers, and they're going to be doing that connecting with multiple modalities and the rationale for this AAC immersion is that speaking children hear between 8 and 50 million words over four years. We want individuals learning to use AAC to experience that same immersion and you can see here we want to match and use AAC to speak, just like if someone was experiencing sign language, they would uh, be seeing and, and hearing someone speaking and signing, and someone using AAC is going to observe an adult or a peer, uh, a friend, a sibling, aunt, uncle, uh, using AAC to communicate. And that's what they use to communicate. Here's how it's done. We're going to focus on communication partner training, coaching, and person-centered planning. And our goal is that that leads to knowledge and skill gains. And then we want to have those knowledge skill gains translate out to better communication performance.